let's get to the baseball and let's see where we stand here with about, uh, you know, three weeks, two and a half weeks left as far as the regular year is concerned. Then I'm going to highlight a couple of ball clubs. Uh, first off, uh, in the American League, you know, Seattle has not played well lately. Uh, they have lost 9 of 13, lost the Angels last night. Angels, a little motivation to beat Seattle after Seattle basically ended their season about three weeks ago with a four-game sweep in Anaheim. So they would like to return a favor. Good start for them last night. And we shall see. 9 of 13 for Seattle. They have not played well. They were ambushed in, obviously, Tampa. They had that George Kirby situation last week, too, which was a very bad look for Kirby, a moaning and groaning. And now he backtracked it. But the bottom line is his original thought sticks. Uh, he was annoyed that he was told to pitch an extra inning, which is what you should do in postseason play. Gave up a home run. Didn't like it. And then he apologized. So, you know, he gets a mulligan. But still, that is a bad sign. So some scenarios there uh, with Kirby and the Mariners have not played very well. And right now, believe it or not, even with Texas's disaster, they would not be in the postseason because you'd have used to win the division and Texas and Toronto would be the wild card teams of Tampa, which is really hard to believe when you remember and how poor the Rangers have been for a better play. They lost 16 to 20. I mean, they were as bad as it gets. They have won three in a row. They got a break with the schedule with the A's and they had a good ball game last night in, in Toronto. But right now, Seattle, the 65 losses would be out. Now, they got a relative that they got the Dodgers this weekend. Won't be easy. Or oh, this week, whenever the Dodgers visit Seattle. And they don't got to travel too much. They have to make the one trip to Texas, but they're done with the East Coast. So you would think that they'd make a, they'd be okay. But again, haven't played that well. We shall see how they recover here uh, in the last two weeks of the season. They were due to calm down a little bit. They were so good for a long period of time. Wondering a little bit about Seattle. Obviously, Houston's in first place. You're going to give them the nod to win the division because they are the Astros. They did get uh, they were shut out last night by the A's. But still, you'd have to think that Houston would have the nod there. And Texas and Toronto will play three more games in uh, Canada this week. Good start for Texas last night. Scherzer pitches tonight off that bad performance. We'll talk to Dan Schumann about this a little bit later on here in his show. But the Rangers may be a little better here recently. Now, they got a tricky schedule. This is a road trip. They go to Cleveland. The Red Sox come to Texas. They have to uh, obviously play uh, Seattle twice. So, and they have to go to Anaheim. So, uh, an issue for Texas. Let's see how they handle a little harder schedule than, say, uh, specifically Seattle. So, we'll keep an eye on that race in the American League. The NL, I mean, again, it's going to come down to, say, Arizona. Cubs are going to make it. Phillies are going to make it. So, it's going to come down to Arizona, the Giants, Cincinnati, and Miami. Arizona right now has a leg up. Played very well this weekend in Wrigley Field. One last night. Tommy Pham's done a nice job. You know, they have five or six over. The Giants have seven games with the Dodgers, which is a major problem. Arizona is done with L.A., which is a huge advantage. The Giants have seven left with the Dodgers. And although the Dodgers won't be playing for anything, I wouldn't think they want the Giants to beat them that many times. So that could trip up San Francisco in this quest for the last spot. They played a little better lately, but it's against the Rockies and the dead Guardians, so let's take it easy. Uh, but Arizona's played pretty well lately. They've done a nice job. The Giants and Diamondbacks will play two games in Arizona next week. Those will be very significant games. Miami did a very nice job over the weekend with two out of three in Philadelphia when they have to win as many games as possible after they beat the Dodgers two out of three. So, nice job by uh, Miami. We'll see how they hang in there. That one spot will be tricky. I think it's Cubs-Phillies in one of those wild card uh, weekend scenarios. And, of course, Houston Seattle and Texas would like to avoid Tampa because the loser of that divisional race will get the raise in the first round and without home field. You don't want to deal with that, so you'd like to win a division, and the winner of the division obviously doesn't have to play in the best of three. So that's what's going on as far as the baseball landscape is concerned. The two teams, and we talked about Houston and Atlanta last week, I think specifically they would still be considered the favorites. I know the Astros don't have nearly as good a record as the Orioles, but their pedigree their track record, Dusty, the whole bit, uh, two straight pennants. I'm going to get a championship. I'm going to make the Astros, you know, I'm going to sort of put them in a scenario where I think they would be the favorite out of the American League right now, which would then leave you Baltimore, the other team uh, in the American League. And it's tricky to say, boy, Baltimore is sort of a, an underdog, or, you know, a dark horse when they're going to win 100 games and they've done a tremendous job. But, yes, they don't have unbelievable starting pitching. I'm not sure what the story is with Batista. They have done a wonderful job. They got a lot of young players, but that's going to be their first 
uh, first time they've dipped their toes in the deep end of the pool. And, I, you know, we've got to see how they handle postseason play. That includes the manager. So from that standpoint, I'm not sure how to expect or what to expect out of Baltimore, out of the American League. Now, I'm going to have to make the Orioles the dark horse team because where else am I going? It's not going to be Minnesota. It's not going to be Tampa. It's not going to – I would put Seattle in there, but I'm not sure if Seattle's going to make the playoffs. So I can't very well say, well, I'll make Seattle my dark horse team when if, in fact, the postseason began today, Seattle would not be in it. So I, I can't say that Seattle a dark horse team when I'm not even sure they're going to be in the playoffs because those are four decent teams there, and I'm not sure what Seattle, if they're going to manage to sneak in. They should, but I can't guarantee it. Baltimore, I know, is going to sneak in, and I think Houston would be the favorite out of the American League anyway. So, And I think Houston's going to win the division despite the fact they're in a dogfight too. Somebody's going to be left out of that Blue Jay, Ranger, uh, obviously Seattle and Astro combination. But I'll, I'll put Houston as the favorite, and I'll put Baltimore as my dark horse. Although I am a little worried about not a lot of dominant starting pitching. Young team. They got a big offense, but it's a young team. And I'm not so sure I don't, what's going on with Batista. Is he going to be able to pitch again this year? Uh, you know, these owner nerves, we start with Dominguez. We'll talk a little bit more about that later with the Red Sox. So that would concern me a little bit with the Orioles, but I'll make them the dark horse. And I'm going to put in the NL, I'm going to put Milwaukee as my dark horse in the NL. Partly because I don't want to go Phillies two years in a row. And I don't think the Phillies have beaten Atlanta back to back seasons either in postseason play. And they're going to be bracketed with Atlanta in that spot. I could make the Cubs the dark horse. You know what? Let me do that. Let me make the Cubs the dark horse in the NL instead of Milwaukee. Uh, the Cubs, of course, put a good pitching. They can hit. They got a little karma. I like the manager an awful lot. They're going to get into the postseason. Maybe they can pick the Phillies off, gain some momentum, maybe even get home field against the Phillies. They're only two back. They have lost the tiebreaker, but they're only two back of the Phillies for that home field in that wild card scenario. Uh, though I don't think the Braves are going to lose two years in a row in the divisional series. I got to come up with somebody. I'll take the Cubs. I could take Milwaukee. They would get their bracketed with L.A. Uh, but, you know, the Dodgers and uh, Dodgers have pitching issues. Arias is out. He is never pitching for that franchise again. They cleaned out his locker. Goodbye. So he's out. And I don't know. And Goslin's out. And all sorts of pitching woes. But, you know, they have Betts and Freeman at the top of the order. Will Smith, Muncie. You know, uh, they got a very, very good offensive team. So uh, I think that the Dodgers will beat Milwaukee despite Milwaukee's pitching. So I'll make the Cubs my dark horse in the NL. Only because they got karma. Only because I like the manager. Only because I could see them beating the Phillies. They have a couple of good pitchers. Steele's having a great year. You can win the, uh, obviously, the um, Cy Young. You got Hendricks sitting there. Tyone. I mean, who knows? Maybe Stroman. Uh, so I I'll take the Cubs as my dark horse in the NL, and I'll take the Orioles as my dark horse in the American League. But uh, uh, these two teams, uh, Atlanta and L.A., were still the heavy favorites to get to the NLCS. And I think Houston is a heavy favorite to get to the ALCS if, in fact, they win the division, and I think they will.